His Excellency, the Prime Minister, with a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome, Your Excellency. 
And we are on our feet. May I request that we be at attention for the national anthem of the Republic of Kenya to be followed by the East African Community Anthem. Masharia, a very short prayer to put us before the Lord. Masharia. Masharia, please, your microphone is in front of you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, our Chief Guest, Right Honorable Prime Minister, the CS, Honorable Members, and all the invited guests. MSME Alliance of Kenya, board members, and the chairman, and all the protocols observed, I wish to request that we start the meeting with a word of prayer. Our Father and everlasting God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this wonderful morning. For this day, you have created and made it a miracle for us. It is a special gift. We appreciate you and we thank you. Thank you because of this wonderful and great people that were brought together. We thank you because of the plans that God we had planned for this day, but you have made it to come to pass. We appreciate you, Lord, and we thank you. As we start this meeting, because in the beginning you are there, we pray that you may start with us. Give us a wonderful meeting, every deliberation and every discussion. We pray that, God, you shall be involved from the beginning to the end. We pray, God, that you are going to be with us and we are going to make this meeting a beautiful meeting to the glory and honor of your holy name. We pray for a wonderful beginning and a wonderful end. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Thank you. May we be seated. Your Excellency, the Prime Minister in African Union, High Representative for Infrastructure Development, Engineer Dr. Raila Molo Odinga, CAS Lawrence Karanja, MD Kenya Railways, Philip Mainga, uh, distinguished members of parliament, all protocols observed. May I invite the chair of MSME for very brief remarks to invite the CAS who will in turn invite your excellency to speak to us. Chair, your microphone is there. Thank you. Uh, Light Honorable uh, Laila Odinga, Prime Minister, uh, invited guest, CS, and other uh, fellow traders, well represented here. I'll make uh, brief remarks. I know your schedule is quite tight, but I would uh, 
it was because of Jada we had uh, Madam Tricia uh, to just with uh, come around here. Uh, Your Excellency, that is the chairperson of the Komba Mutuba Association. A crucial role. And I'm sure she will be able to observe. Only one minute, uh, Madam Tricia, you say hi. Then I will do my speech. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, sir. All protocols observed. Your Excellency, we are very grateful to have you in this meeting today. My name is Apostle Teresia Wailimu Jenga. I am based in Gekomba Market. Gekomba, Your Excellency, and all over the country. We are an organization, we are traders who trade in Mitumba, Mitumba clothing. We are all over Kenya. And we want to thank you so much for availing yourself and also for supporting our trade. Your Excellency, sir, today, my people have sent me to come and say hi to you and also to present a few issues. Number one, our people are requesting your able office to look at them. Uh, we are facing issues because of COVID-19. We are facing very many issues. The businesses are down. Uh, if you can look at the duty, the people are requesting your able office to look at our duty. Uh, you can give us a flat rate, Your Excellency. We are also requesting your able office to look at the issues of transportation. Uh, our MD, Kenya Railways, thank you so much for the support and for bringing this uh, ICD here. We are having, however, a few issues as traders. We would want to request your able office to look at our grievances. Our transportation from Mombasa to Nairobi is very costly, and we have no way of returning our consignment, the containers back to Mombasa. It is costing us a lot of money, and uh, my people have requested your able office to look at this and uh, to, to give us a favorable way of transporting our goods. We, however, want to thank the government for also providing swift transportation to Nairobi uh, from Mombasa. Thank you so much. We would also want to thank you, Your Excellency, for uh, our people. We, we have peace and our people are able to trade. There is no, there is no scare that uh, our, our goods are going to be uh, stopped, our trade is going to be stopped. So we are also thankful. The government have given us a very good platform to continue with our trade. With those few remarks, Your Excellency, I want to invite you to our market, the Komba, which is our headquarters. One of these days, make a date with us, come and visit us. The people down there, they really appreciate what you are doing for the government. Thank you so much, Bwana Chairman, also for this opportunity. Asante San. A big clap for Apostle Tricia. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 she represented Jeddah and also traders. Uh, Your Excellency, like number Laila Odiga, because of the protocols uh, that we are, the COVID protocols, uh, we reduced the number so that uh, we can only bring leaders from different zones. So I want us to uh, appreciate yourself as leaders from different zones. Thank you very much. Uh, because of the of time, uh, and Light uh, Honorable Laila Odiga is uh, having another engagement in a few minutes. Uh, we'll just go straight to the issues that uh, we believe are uh, very important to us. I'll start by thanking the government uh, led by our President, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, who took passion and uh, gave us this BOMA line, whereby the small traders can do their business. We have been having good partnership with the relevant authorities. KRA has offices here. Uh, we want to thank the Commissioner General and uh, the st entire staffs. Kenya Bureau, all the agencies were, uh, were allocated to this place. So we want to take this opportunity, Your Excellency, um, to just give you a few remarks, and I know it's not the first time that we are meeting you. We have met on other occasions. We have highlighted our grievances. But allow me 
to say that MSME Alliance of Kenya uh, is a different um, a, a game changer whereby all sectors are represented and we feel that there's that need of bringing up all the mid, micro, small and medium entrepreneurs who play a, 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 a crucial role in economic growth of this country. The potential of, SMA, of SME's sector, as you have been telling us, has remained untapped and that's how the alliance was formed to bridge this, uh, to bridge this gap. We started this journey almost a decade ago, but we decided to formalize this umbrella as a national outfit um, through having strong structures and operational state, uh, systems to address the pride of the micro, small and medium entrepreneurial viewers. This saw the establishment of MSME Alliance of Kenya, which is uh, now presented by a very able uh, so, uh, zone leaders. Uh, as a local group, because we are registered as a company guarantee, uh, we have faced uh, a bit of challenges um, trying to achieve the goals that uh, have been uh, set for us by the people that we represent. We have made engagements with the different strategic partners, which include di different government agencies that have been mandated to facilitate the operations of MSMEs in this country. A recent study by the Central Bank of Kenya indicates that MSMEs constitute of 98% of all businesses in this country, creating 60% of available jobs and also uh, the largest active contributor to the country's GDP annually. However, with the COVID era, 30% of these businesses are at risk of closing down because of curfew hours, whereby we are requesting through your good office that uh, now is the time that we should we learn to live with COVID and probably open the country so that we can be able to do business like we were doing before. Trade restrictions and the high financial burdens uh, have also been affecting our businesses and some of our members have closed their businesses because they cannot even afford their loans. Uh, we have been f facing outstanding uh, challenges throughout the year. There are too many requirements uh, when uh, you want to start a small business, uh, especially to our youth and those people who leave uh, college or li uh, who have been retrenched. There are several challenges when you want to start that business because in a small shop you are required to have about four or five uh, licenses. There is also unregulated competition from the foreigners due to lack of proper foreign investment policies whereby you get even your neighbor can be a person from a country that is manufacturing goods but he is also selling in your next door. So that has been a, a very challenging mom moment to our people. Recently we introduced uh, the other uh, primitive um, licenses that were introduced, especially for those guys who import uh, liquor to this country, a license of one million has been uh, imposed by NACADA. So these are some of the few challenges that our people that we represent and we represent different sectors are facing. Uh, we would uh, request through your good office that that kind of uh, uh, a primitive license be dropped so that we give our people a chance to business and I'm happy that uh, the members of parliament are here uh, who can also assist us on that um, we need also a, a, a federal customized taxation regime whereby our people be educated and understand how taxes can be paid uh, our people want to pay taxes but sometimes because of where we are coming from you might not understand that there was an, an assessment that you didn't do two or three years ago and uh, you are surprised you are sometimes surprised by an email that you have to pay this amount uh, so sometimes we need uh, through the good offices that we have been interacting to our traders need to be taken through the training to see that this does not happen because 
when a small trader account is closed, it gives you a stop of uh, whatever else you want to do. Limited uh, access to finances also has been an issue whereby you are asked for securities and sometimes uh, as a beginner you don't have any. Uh, there are also other issues whereby the taxes, as uh, Madam Tresi has said, we would like to negotiate with the relevant authority. And I want to talk about the achievement because they are there. Uh, I know we had a list, but because we still have other opportunities uh, uh, on our Prime Minister to even sit down and give all these uh, challenges, I would request that uh, the MSME board get another opportunity to visit you or to sit down with you and do a lot of consultation in between. But I want to recognize some the last people that have uh, attended uh, this event. We are not only uh, CBD, we are Anza pale na mwishimiwa Anthony Oloch, mjumbe wa madhari. Mwishimiwa Anthony Oloch, mjumbe wa Asante sana na mimi Gladys Wang.
paying about four billion for a startup, which to make credit accessible to the SMEs. Because we know one of the reasons why they are not able to assess the credit is a good lack of uh, uh, lack of chart, uh, collaterals. Therefore, we are coming with a scheme where the government will take the risk. Uh, finally, among about the traders who are here, I know some of the challenges they have been facing and the inspection of goods at their destination and we reduce the charges from 6% of the value to 0.6 for those who are able, who are not able to have the inspection done elsewhere. Further to that, we have come with what we are calling the recordation rules so that the importers can know who are the genuine exporters to avoid a situation where goods get to a country and then they are declared to be counterfeit. So those are some of the few issues we are addressing but we keep on engaging them on day-to-day -day basis especially the traders we also have other uh, programs which have set aside especially for the manufacturers and amongst them is where we have come up with constituency industrial development centers where so far we have built 160 industrial development centers to develop the cottage sector uh, the cottage industry in various uh, areas uh, and i know that the government of His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta is committed to addressing the needs and the demands of SME and we keep on engaging. I am happy to have met Teresia here. We engaged them tuba traders during the COVID and we came up with protocols for importation of them tuba. We have addressed the issues which have been raised by the importers on destination in their inspection and any issue which they raise we are we address and respond to them as prompt as possible. Parliament has been a very good partner in assisting us come with the regulations to facilitate trade. And I believe because it is your day, yeah, your excellency, I would go take this opportunity to request you to come and address uh, the uh, the traders here. Karibuni, karibu, tafadhali na waomba tusimame tupigie mwege mwetu wa eshu mama kofi ili akuje wa ongereche. Karibu baba, ongea na watu wako. Asante. Thank you. You may be seated. The members of the SMEs in our country, Hamjambo. Hamjambo Tena. Um, I'm going to begin by apologizing that um, we've taken much longer uh, than we anticipated to come here and I have uh, another engagement which is starting shortly that the reason why we may not have sufficient time but uh, I wanted to look at this as work in progress that I'm available and that I will have another opportunity to talk longer with you people I want to say that the contribution of SMEs to the growth and development of Kenyan economy is well known and not disputed. The of our society, where we are empowering our people to meaningfully participate in our economy. Small and medium sized enterprises represent 98% of all businesses in our country. More than 80% of Kenya's working population rely on SMEs for income. SMEs contributed an estimated 34% of the country's gross domestic product in the year 2016. SMEs generate 80% of new jobs annually. Small enterprises hire large numbers of women and youth and are active in rural and vulnerable populations. As a result, they encourage economic inclusion, empowerment, while reducing employment. I am mentioning those figures basically to show the importance that I myself attach to this sector. The challenge we must address is how to enhance the emergence, growth, and spread of SMEs in Kenya. Now, approaches to enhance SMEs' growth. 
our country since independence has passed through different stages to reach where we are here. You will know that before independence we were running a fairly segregated society where our people, the indigenous population here, were at the bottom of the ladder and therefore were not really a serious participant in economic development of our country. When the independence came, the government started first with the policy of Africanization. And then that was found to be a little bit racist, it was changed to Kenyanization. That was basically an affirmative action process to allow our people to be able to participate in the economic growth of our country. That first mm -hmm. allowed our people through institutions that were created like ICDC or uh, KNTC to begin to engage in uh, small-scale businesses in our country. Now we have reached a stage where we are today. The issues you must confront are how do we ensure entrepreneurs of startups manage sustainable growth of their companies? What kind of support do they require from the government and the public? How do you ensure not only quality quantity, but also quality SMEs? We need to help SMEs understand their ecological habitat and deploy it accordingly. There are those that can thrive with labor-intensive programs. There are those that need high-tech programs. There's need to help SMEs build a closely knit web of cooperation among themselves, build own networks and share resources so that they can maximize on the benefits of cooperation. In Korea, they invested in regional clusters of SMEs with the government support. The clusters then share information and knowledge. This help them to gain collective bargaining power with the big businesses. They also came up with a policy for co-branding. This is a process in which several SMEs market themselves under one brand name. It is a cost-cutting and market measure. We need to help SMEs nurture relationship with the big businesses even while they compete. In Kenya, we need to start with the low-hanging fruits. We need efficient and balanced public policies and ensure they are supportive of SMEs. The government must see itself as being responsible for the protection of small businesses. We need clear legislation that provide clarity on level and, and nature of government support and protection of SMEs. We need clear policies to ensure financial support and fair competition for SMEs. We need to enforce legislation on the local content for public projects. We must establish and enforce Buy Kenya, Build Kenya policies in the public procurement, research and development support. We need to establish funds whose sole purpose is to lend money to SMEs. Some countries have government funded and ran small and medium industry banks that provide money to SMEs at low interest rates. We need that here. And I'm happy to hear from the peers that the government is taking over some uh, burdens and risks in this regard, but this needs to be properly institutionalized. SMEs need, need tax breaks and special tax credits 
especially when the operations involve procurement of commodities from external markets. We need clear anti-monopoly and competition policies. We need to ensure big businesses do not monopolize domestic markets and that SMEs have sound protection from foreigners. And here, indeed, we need to be clear. We are not trying to say that SMEs should kill local manufacturing. Far from it. We say that there is space for the existence of SMEs and local manufacturing. And the SME is basically a starting point that eventually now develops to become also manufacturers in local markets. This is the way it has happened in other countries. And that's why SMEs are playing an important role. We must help SMEs that want to go regional to do so. And here, as you know, we have the East African community market. This is our biggest market, and I know that our SMEs themselves are very active in exploiting this market. We need to remove barriers which still exist in moving goods along our borders to our neighboring countries. This will create a much bigger market for our SMEs. All government ministries need to have programs and provisions for support of SMEs by law. <coughs> Development of SME, SME parks. Increased access to funding in the agriculture sector, especially for SMEs in agriculture value chains. Public-private partnership in enhancing access to infrastructure through the investment in energy, water, and information and communications technology. Reduce electricity costs by introducing the policy of differential pricing, lower electricity prices during off-peak periods. We need to support and promote SMEs that want to engage in exporting to other countries and regions by providing such businesses with export subsidies. Government must encourage dialogue with SMEs with a focus on taxation, licensing, and uh, etc. Taxation and unfair competition are uh, killing our SMEs. And I've, I've said and they've mentioned it, it is an area where there can be proper dialogue so that taxation does not become a big burden that kills the SMEs. It is not proper policy to have come up with very heavy taxes because if the taxes are too heavy, there's always a tendency to evade paying taxes. But if the taxes are reasonable and the net is wider, then the government is able to collect more taxes and everybody is happy. This is where we want to go. I just want to say that the apostle who spoke here before has led a team to come and see me. I've engaged the combat people, I understand fully the challenges that they're facing, problems that they have, and uh, I know that um, those problems can be resolved. Some of the issues that have been raised here, I'm also going to use my position to try to raise it with the other authorities in the government. I know, for example, also, that sometimes there's also unfair competition where people from countries from where the SMEs are importing those who have got direct access to manufacture there also are allowed to come and back here and follow up and also come and, and hook those businesses here in competition with our local traders. This is not right. 
this is not right. And that is also sometimes discrimination in the issuance of visas. That because of COVID is, and COVID is also now being used as an excuse to deny our people access to the, the, the countries of origin where they can go to, to purchase goods which they then bring here to sell. But people from those uh, uh, markets find their way to come here and compete unfairly with our own businesses. This is not right. This is something that needs to be addressed. Finally, because I know that um, the chairman of Kenya Bureau of Standards was here, we are also here with uh, Mr. Richard Ngatia, President of Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, is also here. But the CAPS, I've said, has a very important role to play. In my early incarnation, I was an officer of Kenya Bureau of Standards. I know what standardization is about and what it is not about. Standardization is not supposed to be used to punish businesses. Standardization is supposed to deal with quality. And enhance quality and then also protect people against harmful goods. But there's uh, goods which may be of low quality and are not harmful to anybody. And if somebody wants to buy something which is of low quality, that's what he can afford, why do you deny him or her that, that, that opportunity to do so? By imposing some fictitious standards, I will also going to have opportunity to talk to the Kenya people of standards that they restrict to themselves what standardization is about. Fitness for use, that is what standardization is all about. I thank you very much for this. So much, uh, Your Excellency, because of the interest of time, I would like to thank you so much for honoring our invitation and coming, and also being able to address the issues that we have been, uh, we have asked you. Also, our host at the KRC and Kent, and also the, the, the president of KCC. I thank you for coming. Thank you for honoring this invitation. We really appreciate you, Excellency, because of the interest of time. I know you are going to have other engagements. Asante sana, and God bless you. Thank you.